Hey booktube, it's Jackie, how's it going? If you are new to me and this is the first time you're seeing my face, hello, what's up? My name's Jackie, I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So I hope that's why you're here because that's what's gonna be happening. If you're not new to me, thank you for always tuning in the continued support, I really do appreciate it. So today for you, as you can see from my title of the video is my September TBR. We are already in September, my reading goals are shit. <laughs> But you know what? I'm still plugging away. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing my thing. You know how it goes. But September is really fun for me because September is smutty September. And we all know how much of a smut slut I am. We all know it. I'm not going to sit here to deny it. I wear that. I will rock that freak flag proudly. Bring it the fuck on. Okay. But also something about September is also it's sequel September. So I thought it'd be really fun to try to join forces and do smutty sequel September because also what happens in September is because hot girl summer is officially over and it is spooky bitch season okay so if you like to know what this spooky bitch is going to be reading for smutty sequel September grab yourself a drink have yourself a seat and let's get talking some books okay pumpkin spice is out the corn is starting to turn it's getting a little chilly in the evenings football season is upon us it is fall, motherfuckers. It is fall and I am so excited because that means all my spooky reads are coming out and it's September. So I gotta rock my sequels. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This month I'm super, super excited about. Um, I've got quite a TBR, which I mean, seriously, when don't I have a quite a TBR? Let's just fucking be honest about it, guys. Okay. But let's just dive right in. So breaking up into categories like I have been previously because that tends to work. Uh, as first, my carryovers. These are books that I carry over from last month and I have two. One of them is Kristen Hanna's The Nightingale. I started this right at the tail end of the month. So I'm about a quarter way through it. I'm still in my historical fiction kick. This is my first Kristen Hanna book that I've ever read and everyone says that I will love her because I love historical fiction. And also this is one of my 12 and 24 books to read. So I'm very happy that I'm starting it. It is one of the oldest books on my TBR. I bought this thing in 2016. It is one of the oldest books on my TBR. So I'll be very, very happy when I finish this and I have it off my TBR, my physical TBR, because I will feel like I have accomplished something, something, <laughs> you know how it goes, but I'm having a really good time with it so far. It's, um, it's a little slow going. Um, I'm still getting to really know the characters in the setting that we are in. This is World War II in France after um, Hitler has taken over France and France has surrendered. We follow two sisters. That's at the point that I'm at right now. One is married with a daughter and the other one was kind of the younger sister who's just been kind of on her own. She's very adventurous, very um, wants to fight, wants to be rebellious while the other one wants to follow the rules. So you see the, this dichotomy between the two both being forced in this situation that was completely uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. But uh, I'm having a really, really good time with it so far. And it's, it's, it's going good. It's going good. Um, I feel good about it. I feel good. And also I'm a quarter way through it. So yay. The next book I'm carrying over is actually an audiobook that I've been working on. And this is The Forbidden Rumstringer by Kira Andrews. It looks like this. This is the first installment into a trilogy. This is an MM romance trilogy. Don't ask me why I've been obsessed with Amish romances lately. I have no fucking idea. I watched an Amish Lifetime movie based off a real murder in the Amish community. And ever since then, I'm like, I need all the Amish romances that I can fucking get. And I really wanted to read an MM one because I thought the idea of it was really, really kind of cool. And the first Amish romance I got was a total bust. This one, Holy shit, guys. <laughs> loving it so far. Definitely, definitely loving it. I'm having a very, very good time with this one. Um, listening to an audio. So I'm very excited to continue with it and tell you more about it um, in my upcoming weekly wrap ups because I have not finished it yet. But this is, this is stellar. I'm having a great fucking time with it. Definitely. Um, just the purity in it mixed with the tawdriness and the hidden and keeping everything quiet, but yet this pining, almost Jane Austen feel romance. Uh, yeah, it's, it's excellent. I'm having such a good fucking time. I never thought I'd say an Amish romance makes me happy, but it is, it is. And it's making me really wet. Like, look guys, not fucking, killing, not, they got it down. This bitch has got it down. It's, oh God, it's so, mm, yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for that one because it'll definitely uh, be coming around. So those are my two carryovers for the month. 
I do have um, one book that I actually have to read this month, and that is my Black Cat Book Coven book. If you are not familiar with the Black Cat Book Coven, that is an online book club that I am part of with three other lovely witchy ladies here. Uh, that is Becky from Beck X Reads, Laura from A Book Circus, and Kristen from Kristen Craves Books. And I will link all their channels in the down box below. And this upcoming month is actually a new release, uh, not a debut from this author, but a new release in September. Uh, the Cottage Around the Corner by D.L. Soria. This is Kristen's pick, and it is a cozy cottage core romance, very reminiscent of Gilmore Girls, which is a show that I did not watch. Um, so when we were doing our live show for the last month's book, it was definitely polarized. Me and Becky were like, uh, and then Laura and Kristen were like, yay. So like, this is gonna be an interesting one. Um, it's not a sequel, so this is one of the few books that does not meet, you know, the criteria. But, you know, it's my fucking TBR. I can do what I want with it. Um, but I, I do, I am excited that it's a new book. It's a new release because um, I have been trying to read more new releases this year. Um, but money is getting in the way of that one. Let's just be honest about that. But we'll make an exception for this guy uh, because my book club is important to me. I love these girls. And the live show is at the end of the month and then we will be doing a reading sprint. I do not know off the top of my head um, when they are. I want to say the 15th is the reading sprints on Laura's channel. And I think it the live show is on Kristen's channel at the end of the month. Um, but I will keep posting my community tab with the dates and everything like that. And also if you follow me on Instagram, you will see it there. But this is what we will be reading for this month. So if you'd like to join in, you're more than welcome to. Uh, last month was we all finished the book and we were all excited. So we're kind of, let's keep this going. This is the first book in the new set, uh, the new quarter of the of the club. So uh, it's gonna it's gonna set the precedence for the rest of the year, for sure. So, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I did not watch the Gilmore Girls, so I don't really know what to expect. I just know that show never really appealed to me. Um, there's not enough death and destruction in it for me, <laughs> essentially. So we will, uh, we'll see. But this is on the docket for this month. The next books that I have are my free reading books. These are books that I um, am feeling. I'm not promising I'm going to get to them, but these are the ones that I am thinking they meet the criteria of smutty sequels. And so let's just get into it. So the first one right off the top, this is one of my 12 and 24 books. It's already made its appearance on two TBRs and I have yet to start it. And I figure it smutty September, might as well go for what is probably supposed to be one of the smuttiest books on my shelf. And that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. And before you ask, yes, I will be doing a reading vlog of this experience. This is Nesta and Cassian's story. And I don't like Nesta now, so we're gonna let's see how I do with this one. But this is one of my 12 and 24. I really like to get this one under my belt because then that whole series is done. And then I only have one Sarah J. Mass book still left to read. <laughs> Maybe I will complete this bitch this year. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? But uh, yes, so it's on the docket. It's a nice, thick, chunky one. So keep your eyes peeled for that vlog. Uh, vlogs take me a while because I do film it the entire time I'm reading it. Um, but you guys tend to like my reactions to these. So fingers crossed I get some good reactions. The next smutty sequel, it's not really a sequel. It's actually the culmination of a series again. Uh, so was that one. Yeah. Um, and that is A Touch of Chaos by Scarlett St. Clair. This is the last installment to the Touch of Darkness series. This is where we get to combine the Touch of Darkness and the Hades saga combined both points of view into the same ending conclusion of the story. And then also theoretically, maybe the spark of a new series that she's working on. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yes. Oh my God, I don't have to say entirely goodbye to these guys. But this is Persephone and Hades story. It is, a Touch of Darkness is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Touch of Darkness is Persephone's perspective of the story and the Hades saga is Hades' perspective of the same story. And Hades is not where he needs to be. Persephone is to fucking do her shit like she did in Malice, like she needs to like let it go and I'm ready. I'm ready. This series has been a long time coming. This is one of my favorite series. I love this. Scarlett St. Clair is one of my favorite authors. I actually got to meet her um, a, almost a year ago. Um, the year ago anniversary actually came about last month. So I got to meet her a year ago and I got her to sign one of my books and I was so excited. And now I'm excited to finally get to the conclusion of this, but I don't want to say goodbye, but knowing that I might not have to, 
makes me picking this book up even more plausible because I just, I couldn't say goodbye just yet. You know, you know how it goes. So fingers crossed, this will be the ending. This will be the conclusion. This will be the steam. This will be the heat. This will be Hades burning the fucking world down. Oh, I hope so. Mm. I need a drink on that one. I love Hades. He's my fave. He's my bae. I love him. Mm. Yummy. The next book I decided to pick up is the conclusion to a trilogy, but not the end of a series. Um, you see, I am obsessed with Amo Jones. I love that bitch. She is uh, my spirit animal, okay? That woman is creepy, dark, scary, and I usually need Jesus a cigarette and therapy after reading her books in that order. So um, I started the Elite Kings Club series about two years ago, and I would really like to complete the base trilogy of it. So I picked up the third installment, Tacit Amortuis. Um, I don't know what that actually means. I think it's right here. Whisper from the dead. I think that's what it means in Latin. It's, it, it's written in red right underneath it. Very, very tiny font. Um, but this is the third installment to the Elite Kings Club series. This is the conclusion to our main couple's story. Um, where uh, Bishop and I cannot remember her name off the top of my fucking head right now. Uh, that's bad. Why can't I remember her name? That's so bad. Anyway, Bishop. I remember Bishop because dope, dope fucking name. But yeah, this is the conclusion of their story. And then it spans off into another trilogy that is connected. But you have to read this trilogy first before reading other ones. From what I understand about the Elite Kings Club series. So we're going to see how it ends. Yep. Oh my god. That's three conclusions, guys. That's three conclusions. That's asking a lot of me. But it's Smutty September. So hopefully it works. The next book I picked, um, not so much smutty, but it is a sequel. It is actually an authentic sequel. These are actually, the next books are authentic sequels. And this is The Missing of Claire de Lune um, by uh, the Christelle Davos. And this is The Mirror Visitor. Yeah, The Mirror Visitor Quartet. This is a sequel to it. And this is actually a French translation. This whole series was originally written in French and it was translated into English. And I did a full book review on A Winter's Promise, which I will link here for you. You can go check it out. Um, but recently somebody commented on it, which brought it back to the forefront of my mind. I'm like, oh, I should really do that. So I will be planning on doing a full book review on this one as well, since I've already started the series with a review. Um, kind of excited about that one. But I am excited to know exactly how the mirror walking um, aspect of our heroine gets to play into this one because the hopefully the romance is a little bit more fast paced than it was in the first book because goddamn that shit was slow that was slow as all get out but I really enjoyed the storyline with this with Ophelia and Thorn and Ophelia's power being an Animaeus where she can hold an object and trace the history back of that said object. So anybody who's been in contact with that object, she can trace the history back of while they were holding that object. And I really enjoy that tactile experience within these books. I think that's really fun and um, I'm ready to jump back in the world and it's starting to get a little chilly. So I feel better because the world that they're on is like frozen all the fucking time. So bring it on, bring it on bitches. Let's do it. I don't expect that to be super smutty, but I do expect it to have some angst because it is a YA, but it is a French translation and they, they didn't get the blowjob. So, at least I think they did. I remember reading that somewhere. Don't quote me on that. Don't actually quote me on that. But I read it somewhere. So hopefully it's good. The, uh... <clears throat> Last final book I picked is Hydrus by Anna or Amara Ray. This is another true sequel and smutty sequel about a coven of witches. I read the first one and it was amazing. It was five stars. I read it in two sittings. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. This one is about a witch with the gift of water and a fae. So some cross breeding here, guys. It's, it's okay. We're all right with that. But this is Naya and... Finnerador. I'm just going to call him Finn. 
that's a messed up name. I'm just gonna call him Finn. Um, and I'm excited. Uh, Jennifer over the book, ref uh, Jennifer, fuck. <laughs> Jen at the book refuge. Uh, I don't want to call her Jennifer. Um, Jen at the book refuge raves about this series and she just, she was the reason actually I picked up this entire series and I haven't picked it up in a while. So I thought finally let's dive right back into book two for Smutty September. And actually I read the first book in September of last year. So that's actually kind of ironic. I just realized that. Yep, there you go. But that is my TBR, guys. That's it. Um, chunky, for sure. Definitely a chunky one, but it is doable. And Smut reads kind of fast for me when I actually sit down and read. So there you go. Here it is. Um, that's going to be fun. I hopefully I will pick up some more books, some audiobooks, and um, maybe some Kindle books. I do. I'm really enjoying this from Springa series. So who knows? Maybe I'll pick up that next audiobook because it is a free one on Audible. So that's kind of exciting. But yeah, that's what I got for you guys. I will see you guys all soon with another video and wish me luck. And I hope you have a very smutty September. Embrace it. Just embrace it, guys. Spooky bitch season. Let's do this. It's also smutty, smutty spooky bitch season. Let's rock it.